In this video, we are going to show you 10 useful Gmail tips and tricks. Gmail is a popular email service that accounts for 36.5% of all global email opens. A lot of the world and businesses use Gmail as their email platform. So let's get right into it. The first one that we're here to do today is to customize your theme and layout. So we're gonna hit the gear icon right here in the top right hand of the screen. And we're going to go to the quick settings here. So you can see that there's density. You can change the density to make sure that you can see as much of the email as you want. If you scroll down, you can change the theme. So I don't really like this plain white background. I think I like looking maybe at the canyons or some other nature. You can change that around. I know it's a little bit distracting, but you can pick a picture as well from your own personal library and put it in there. And that will just change the layout to make it a little less boring. Let's go back into settings. If you scroll all the way down, you can see the reading pane. The reading pane is really important because it allows you to split the screen so that you can see the email and a preview to the either right or left hand side of it. It's super helpful when and scrolling through emails, it makes it a lot faster. So that way that you can just go down using the arrow key and not having to open every single email. I highly recommend that you put that in there, whether you like it below or on the right side, whichever you prefer is fine. So the next tip that's super helpful here is creating templates. Let's go back into Gmail now and click on the gear icon again in the top right hand corner. And then we will go to see all settings after the quick settings. And if you go over here to advance and then go down to templates and click enable, then you should press save changes. And and then we can go create our templates after this. Now we can go to compose a message. And once that pops up, you're going to click on the three dots right here in the bottom right hand corner, go to templates. Obviously, I don't have any templates right now, but basically I can make this email a template. So this worked out really great when you're sending out massive emails to recruiters for college, or if you're just sending a template every week, maybe you have a newsletter and you want to format the same way every single week. So you can make this here. Let's just type something in here, the newsletter, and then we can save it as a template, save as a new template. Template. We're just going to call it newsletter. And then now every time when we go back into this, let's go to compose, go back to templates. There it is. And it says the newsletter that I spelled wrong. This is a great way, like I said, to have something auto populated for a thing that you might send recurring like a newsletter or if you're sending out mass emails. Okay, so the next tip we have for you here is to use Grammarly. Now we'll leave a link in the description below so you can download it. But Grammarly is really helpful when correcting grammar as well as misspellings in your email. So look at this right here. I have a sentence that's not written well and that thinks that this QS, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, that's not correct. We'll go over here to Grammarly, we'll download it, we'll show you how it's done, and then we can work on it. So after you've clicked on the link, you'll see here to add it to Chrome or Safari, whichever one you're using, add extension. Okay, now it looks like Grammarly is active. So we'll go back to Gmail and we'll just refresh the page and it should work perfectly. Great, so it looks like Grammarly is now active and you can tell what I wrote earlier is not correct, right? The T and the H are capital when it should just be the T and this word is not a word QS super helpful you must have this if you're sending out professional emails tip number four is creating filters this is by far one of the most useful tips for Gmail so let's say I want to filter out all newsletters from my inbox okay so there's a couple ways to do this but this is the most effective way that I use so let's go into the gear icon again in the upper right hand corner go to see all settings and then we're going to go over to labels after that we are going to go down and click create new label and I'm going to name this newsletters create. Now that that's done, I'm going to go over to filters. So I am going to go down and create new filter. Basically, the way to do this is that you have to find a word or words that pop up in every single email that you're trying to filter. So for newsletters, if you guys know at the very bottom or sometimes at the top, it has a button where you can unsubscribe. So in the has the words, I'm going to write unsubscribe. Now the problem with this is that some emails that you get will not be newsletters, but will have the word unsubscribe. So what you're going to have to do is just get the sender's email and put it in the doesn't have. That will exclude those emails. It's a manual process. It'll take some time to really refine. But once you have all those emails in, then you will have a full folder with just newsletters excluded from those other things that got in there in the beginning. So now we can create this filter. It has the words unsubscribe and we're going to create this filter. And then we want it to skip the inbox. So we want to archive it. Basically, all the newsletters that hit my inbox now are not going to go there. They're going to go into this separate folder. And then we want to choose the label. And obviously, we're going to go down and pick newsletters. So once we're done with this, we want to hit create filter and that will bring us to the next page where it gives you a bunch of other options. So we want to skip the inbox and we're going to archive it in this specific folder. So we don't want these newsletters hitting our inbox. So we're going to click that one and then we're going to click apply label and then we'll go down and pick newsletters, the ones that we're sending all of the labels to for the unsubscribe. After we click newsletters for the apply label, we are all good. There's a bunch of other options down here that you can do, but for now we're good. So 
we're going to create that filter. Great. And now that's been created and you can see it here. Also, if you scroll down to the bottom on the left hand screen here where I have labels, it'll also be in newsletters here. Yeah, this is a great way to use filters. Highly recommend that you use this one and filter out as much stuff from your inbox as you can. The next tip is priority inboxes. This goes along a little bit with creating filters, but let's go back into Gmail and we'll click on the icon gear up in the top right again. We'll scroll down and then in the quick settings, you can see right here, priority inbox. Now priority inbox is very, very useful. We'll go into it right now and I can show you what's great about priority inbox is those labels that we created. I know those ones were for newsletters, but let's say that we wanted to do a specific client. You can do those same filters for that and then you can filter this priority inbox with those labels. So if you click on this and you go down to more options, you can see at the bottom here are all my labels and newsletters is one of them. This is a great way to filter out the most important things you need. Also, when you click on number one here, it shows you the default labels that Google has already set, which one of them is important. And then you can filter by unread, read. And like I said, you can put as many labels as you want to do for your priority inbox. Priority inbox is super helpful. I highly recommend this one. This gets rid of all the stuff that you don't need to see and make sure that you see the most important stuff when you first start your day. The next tip is scheduling your emails with a plugin called Boomerang. So if you noticed when I went to compose the email earlier in the video, you could see this thing at the bottom here. This is what Boomerang does. To download this, just type in Boomerang for Gmail on the internet. You can see the page here. You can download it and then your Gmail will have it here. You can see it up here and you can adjust the settings and then down here as well. This was super helpful before Gmail had the feature to schedule an email. I use this in college when you want to send an email and you want it to show up in somebody's inbox right when they get there in the morning. So it's not caught up with all the emails that they get overnight. So you can send it at 9.13 in the morning, right when they sit down at their desk. This is really helpful. It also can remind you to send a follow-up email if they have not replied. So as you can see down here in the bottom, you can send later and it gives you options for when to send and then you can confirm it and then you can check it later to make sure it's sent, but it's very reliable. So if you go down in the bottom here to send later, you can see it has different options for when you want to send it. You can send it at an exact time or in just an hour time frame, two hours, three hours, a week, two weeks, whatever you prefer. Also, it will notify you if they have not replied, which is a really cool feature that comes along with the Boomerang extension. Another useful feature with Boomerang is this little icon in the bottom right hand corner. As you type more words, that will fill up. And basically what that is telling you is how likely someone is to reply based on your character account. That's a really good metric when you're sending out cold emails to recruiters or sponsors, whatever you might do. That will show you basically, is this likely to be replied to based on your character account? Really cool tip in Boomerang as well. The next tip is creating a signature. Now we actually have a video tutorial on the channel of creating a signature in a third party app called HubSpot. I highly recommend you check that out. That's a really neat video. HubSpot is a company that creates Gmail signatures and it's really cool for creatives and business owners, but we're going to show you today how to do it within Gmail. So if you click on the gear icon again over here and you go to see all settings, if you go down to general all the way to the bottom, you will see create new on signatures. So we're going to create a new signature here. We're just going to name it signature one and we're going to create here. It will allow you to type in whatever you want. So I can say the creator, it'll let you hyperlink. You can add an image from your company actually, which is really neat. So if you scroll down here, I can go and add an image and then I can actually hyperlink this image as well. I would just insert the image and then go over it like this. And then you can click here and hyperlink it and then it'll hyperlink to your website. This is a really cool feature. I highly recommend signatures on Gmail, whether you're creating one with a third party app like HubSpot or you're just doing it within the app. It just maintains a professional look. The next tip is using Gmail offline. Now this comes in super helpful and a lot of people don't know that you can use it. This comes in helpful when you're on a plane or in a place that does not have Wi-Fi. Let's get into it to show you how to do it right now. So let's click that gear icon in the top right hand corner again and we'll go to see all settings and then you'll see the offline setting at the top bar here. Click on that. Then all you have to do is enable offline mail and then you can choose how long you want to store the emails. Please choose one of the following whether you want to keep the data on the computer or remove it from the computer. So I'll just click keep data on computer, save changes. So now that it's loaded up, you can see that it's created an outbox here for me because it knows that I'm in offline mode. Basically, that's going to store all my emails. And then when I get back to internet, it'll send it out here. Another thing is just make sure that you have mail.google.com pulled up and that's how you can access the emails offline. The next tip is undo send. This will literally unsend an email in a specific time frame. I'm going to show you now how to adjust that, but this can come in super handy. As you can imagine, you send something to somebody, it wasn't supposed to get sent. So let's get right into showing you how to do it. So go into the gear icon again, select see all settings here, and then we'll go right here in general and you can see send cancellation period, extend that to 30 seconds if it is 
season already. So make sure that you have the most time to undo that send if possible. So let's go back and compose a message and then I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so I'm going to send this message here and then we'll undo send on it. So let's send and then in the bottom left-hand corner, keep an eye out here. It's a little bit discreet, you might miss it, but I have 30 seconds to undo this message. I can press undo and there you go, it's undone and it comes back on my screen and it never got to the person that I sent it to. It's a super helpful tip as I'm sure you can imagine, be sure to use this one. The last and final tip is shortcuts. Just like you can use them in Excel, you can do the same thing in Gmail. So let's get right into it. Again, top right hand corner, see all settings and we will go to advanced this time and you have to turn these on. So you can go to custom keyboard shortcuts at the bottom, click enable, save changes. And then to pull up these shortcuts, once they're enabled, you can just press shift question mark on your keyboard. So I'll show you that right now. Shift question mark pops up all these and then you can scroll down and you'll have to turn these on. Mine were turned off. I had to enable them and you can see all the different shortcuts that you can use. So let's try this one right here. Go to inbox. You're going to press G then I. So let's say that we're in settings here and we want to get back to the inbox without having to use our mouse to click. So just as you can do in Excel, you would do the same thing. Just press G I and that'll take us right back to the inbox. Read through all these shortcuts. There's a bunch that you can implement. It'll take some practice, but these are super helpful in making your time more efficient in Gmail. Those were our 10 tips and tricks for helping you be more productive and efficient in Gmail. If you enjoyed this video, please hit us with a subscribe down below. Also, that link to Grammarly is down below in the description. This channel is dedicated to helping business owners with tutorials like these today. If you want more content like this, please subscribe and we will see you in the next one.